My name is Kapi McGrath. I'm a textile artist, felt maker, art educator, and curator of projects and exhibitions. As a felt maker, I have a special interest in heritage. Heritage includes history, culture, and traditions. In this lesson, I'm going to look at some pieces from the decorative arts and history part of the National Museum of Ireland in Collins Barracks. I'm going to show you how a historic object can inspire your artwork, how to work with prefelt, and how to create some bigger collaborative pieces. Prefelt is also ideal to make bigger collaborative pieces on. This one from St. Lawrence's National School in Sullens was designed and created by fourth class students in 2015. The students took inspiration from their own environment. The village is located on the crossroads of the Grand Canal, railway, highway, and there is also an airport nearby. Prefelt shapes and a lot of other materials created texture and a nice story on this wall piece. Fifth class uh, students in Powerstown Educate Together National School worked on a theme about identity and citizenship. After a lot of brainstorming and planning, the whole class made this wall hanging on a big piece of uh, prefelt and also cut the main shapes on the picture out of prefelt. The Stokes Tapestry tells the story of a uh, soldier's life in uh, the barracks. My picture is going to start on a piece of uh, prefelt. This is an A4 size uh, prefelt. It measures 29 centimeters by 21 centimeters. It's important to know because in felt making there is always shrinkage in the process. I'm also going to measure my piece after I completed the felting. Stokes tapestry in the National Museum at Collins Barracks was not felted, but it is a stitched patchwork. Stephen Stokes was a soldier himself and stitched this tapestry over 20 years. On the tapestry and in the soldiers' lives, Horses were really, really important. So on my picture, I'm going to have a horse. Once you made your design, cut the shape out of a piece of uh, paper. With a dark marker, transfer the shape over to the prefelt. Once you transfer the shape, cut it out. On the base, I'm going to put first some loose wool for the background. For the background, I put one layer of wool. Once you are happy with your design, place a towel on the table, put some bubble wrap on it with the bubbles facing up. The bubble wrap should be big enough that you can fold it over your uh, picture as well. 
and place your pre-felt with the background color on it. Place your pre-felt cutout or anything else what you want to put on this picture. I'm going to have a frame on it. Make sure that everything is at the right place. And then sprinkle some soapy water on the picture. You can use a bar of soap and a basin with some water in it. And take the other side of the bubble wrap and cover it down that now the bubbles are inside. And with a little soapy water on your hand, press the water into the layers everywhere. Starting from the middle and sliding your hand outwards. And spread the water again evenly. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to fold the little overhanging edges to the back. And I can also see from here whether the piece is wet enough. I'm also going to fold this. I, I want a nice and straight edge, but you could leave these edges also naturally on the outside. And have a little soap on your hand so you can stick it down on the back. everything is nice and straight then you can keep rubbing it on both sides flip the whole piece over to the other side and with some soapy water on your hand keep rubbing this side as well for five minutes Time to time, have a look how your piece is going and you can tap a little bit of soap on the surface. If the pattern on your picture is not moving anymore, then you can move on to do some rolling on the piece. Just test it gently. You don't want to move anything too much. Flip it over to the side, to the back. And when you start rolling, we are going to roll it from all four directions 40 times. I'm rolling up the piece with the bubble wrap, nice and tight. Then I just Roll the towel over it and roll it 40 times, moving your hand a little bit in and out. One, two, three. After 40 rolls, roll out first your towel, then roll out the piece and turn it 90 degrees. So now you are going to go from the side. Make sure that Everything is a little bit soapy and wet. If not, just tap a little bit of soap on the back. Have the picture facing down for another uh, three rows, just to make sure that the pattern is going to stick to the background. 
and then cover it back and roll it up now from the side. Roll the towel out, roll the piece out and turn it again to another side. Check whether it's a little bit soapy and wet everywhere. Tap a little soap and water on the surface. And then roll it again. Roll the towel out first and open up the bubble wrap. Turn it to its next side. I still have the picture facing down to give it more time to, to stick. And I'm also adjusting the shape after every roll so it's nicely shrinking evenly from all directions. I just put a little bit of soapy water on the back just to make sure that everything is soapy and also wet. You finished with the 40, roll the piece out from the bubble wrap and by then you see on the back how the color started coming through to the other side. Let's have a look at our picture and it looks like everything is sticking nicely. I'm just stretching a bit the shape just to make sure that it's, it's keeping its shape. And once I can, I can uh, move my hand on it and nothing is moving anymore, all the decoration is uh, sticking, then I'm just going to roll it up into a ball, squeeze a little bit of water out of it, just a little bit, I still have to keep a little water in it and I'm going to roll it in my hand. This is all going to give a little more friction for the piece and it helps all these fibers what we looked under the microscope to really migrate and match together, entangle with each other and it will make my piece shrink. I do a little squeezing on it, rolling a little bit. And time to time I open it just to make sure that inside nothing is sticking together, where it shouldn't stick together, and that the shape is still as I want it. I can gently stretch it if I want a nice and rectangle shape, but it's also nice to have a, a nice and organic shape. So then I just go back and do a little bit more. You, uh, at the end, you can also roll it in itself, you can roll up the piece and then you can roll it a little bit more. Once your picture is nice and strong, you can wash the soap out of it under the tap. You just run the water on it and keep squeezing the piece until all the soapy water is gone. And then we are going to shape it back into flat. Once the piece is washed out, there is no more soapy water on it, in it. Squeeze a little bit all the water out of it and shape the piece into the shape you would like to dry it in. When I'm making a functional piece, it's important that uh, 
I calculate the shrinkage really well. Let's see how much this piece shrank this time. So now the width of the piece is approximately 24 centimeters and the height of the piece is 18 centimeters. The last thing what you have to do with your piece is to, to place it close to the radiator or put it on a, on a washing line. Try to let it dry flat so this is the shape it's going to keep. Hope you will enjoy making your own felted picture.